I finally got around to try using Paper 2D with C++. In this video I'll implement the character movement, switching flipbooks for idle, running, jumping and falling, and also make a one-way platform you can jump through from the bottom but don't fall through from the top, all using C++ with Unreal Engine 5.2. On this channel I mostly cover blueprints and that will always be my main focus, however a lot of you are also interested in C++ and have asked how Paper 2D works together with it. But I also haven't really done that before, so this video is a devlog sharing my learning process rather than a full on tutorial. The reason I was finally able to go through with this is that PVS Studio has approached me and offered to sponsor the creation of this video. PVS Studio is a static analyzer that helps you improve the quality, security and safety of your code. It works with multiple programming languages including C++ and it's also very easy to implement in the build process of Unreal Engine. Even great developers will write code with typos and other kind of bugs that can decrease the readability and security of the code over time. PVS Studio analyzes your code and helps you catch these errors before they cause any real trouble and cost you a lot of time or money. Throughout this video I'll also use their Visual Studio plugin to analyze the code that I've written and you can check out their software from the link in the description. This link has a promo code that gives you one month of free access to the analyzer and you can pick between a team and enterprise license. However, Unreal Engine integration only works with the enterprise license so make sure to pick that one. To understand how to create a paper 2D game with C++, I decided to look at the old 2D side scroller template that we had in Unreal Engine 4. I find it a lot easier to learn from real source code rather than having to look through documentation or look up tutorial videos. I didn't want to just copy paste things blindly though, but really look at the code and try to understand it. But first I had to create a new project in Unreal Engine 5.2 and set up my sprites and flipbooks. I then created a new C++ class based on the paper character. This way I can inherit all the functionality from it but also add my own logic in C++. To be able to easily change parameters and set up the sprite I then created a blueprint based on my custom C++ character. And after setting up the default pawn and also adjusting some project settings for sprites I could then spawn in my character. However, there was still no camera on the character, so my view was spawning inside of it, which you can see if I eject out of the player controller. So that's the thing I first want to bring over from the 2D side scroller character's C++ code. In the header file, I could quickly find the two variables for the spring arm and camera they set up and brought them over to my character. However, these components will also need to be initialized and set up in the constructor of the CPP file. This code doesn't really do anything complicated. It creates the components, attaches them to the right object and sets the default values. On the camera however they set it to orthographic view which is pretty buggy so I removed those lines. And my code failed to compile because I of course forgot the include statements at the top. But once it compiled successfully the spring arm and camera showed up with the correct settings in the blueprint. The next step was setting up input actions and bindings for the character. However here the 2D side scroller template can't help us because it's not using the enhanced input system from Unreal Engine 5.1 or higher. So for this I looked at the code of the third person character as a reference. In the header file there are variables for the input mapping context and all of the input actions we need, so I copied them over. In the CPP file under begin play the input mapping context is being initialized, so I had to also mimic that. There was another function called setup player input component which was overriding the function on the parent so I believe it's called automatically on initialization. And this is the place where I had to create a binding between each input action and the function they should execute. The jump action simply calls jump or stop jumping on the character class. While the move action calls a custom move function which was the next thing I had to bring over to my character. When I tried to hot compile with live coding I got an error again. But after I added the include statement which I again forgot, the code did compile. However there was still one step left to make the character receive inputs. I did create the variables for the input mapping context and input actions in the header, but I still needed to set the assets to use in the blueprint. And then the character was able to walk around in all directions and also jump. Of course the animation is still just stuck in idle, but that will be taken care of in a later step. However the movement directions were a bit messed up. The up arrow moves the character to the right and the right arrow moves it downward for example. And I believe this is probably because I got the move function from a third person character that's supposed to move around in 3D space. So I changed the modifiers in the input mapping context to fix the directions. And even though I finally set up the movement logic and got things to compile, there can still be issues with our code that maybe aren't as fatal, but make the code less readable or less safe in the long run. So I wanted to check the quality of the code that I implemented so far with PVS Studio. 
The setup process was extremely simple and getting it to work with Unreal Engine through the Visual Studio plugin also only took a few steps. After running the build I only had a single warning and this was about an issue that easily happens if you do a lot of copy pasting. I was setting the same value twice in a row on the character movement component and this is not a fatal issue but it decreases the readability of your code and can confuse other team members as to what you were trying to do here. And here PVS Studio had my back and let me know which lines were problematic so I could clean them up. Now that the camera was set up and the movement was working, the next step was implementing the switch from the idle animation to the walk animation. And making sure that we can also turn the character left and right. And again, here the 2D side scroll template character was a good reference. First I had to set up a tick function in my character. In the tick a function called update character is being called so I also had to set that up as well. This function calls update animation which we'll look at in a bit but also at the bottom it checks our travel direction and then sets the control rotation accordingly. This is what allows the character to turn left and right. The update animation function is actually also quite simple. It simply gets the velocity and vector length of the character and then decides if it should play the running animation or idle animation using a ternary operator. However I also needed to create a variable which exposes the flipbooks we want to use and after compiling I could set the animations for the run and idle flipbook in there. And everything regarding the animation switching worked out nicely. However the turning logic was bugged out and when I held left the character would just keep on turning. So I looked at the move function again to see what is causing this. And it turned out that it was related to us using the forward vector instead of just having a constant world direction for the add movement. I've made 2D characters using the forward vector before but when you implement the turn logic it actually gets a bit complicated and you have to save the initial rotation and always compare against that. But this time around I didn't want to bother with that so I could just get rid of these other lines as well and now the turning worked out just fine. I then wanted to take things a bit further than the 2D side scroller template and also implement a jump and falling animation. First I had to check if we are airborne and for this I can get is falling from the character movement component. If this is not the case we can just apply our walk or idle animation just like we did before. If we're falling however I needed to check the player velocity on the z-axis and if it's smaller than 0 then we play the falling animation, otherwise the jump rise animation. But I still needed to create variables for these animations in the header before compiling. And then I could again set the flipbooks for these animations in the blueprint. Originally just getting to this point was my goal but I was starting to get into the flow and wanted to do a little bit more. So I decided to also create a one way platform you see in many jump and run games to close it out. Your character can jump through from the bottom but doesn't fall through from the top. I first had to import the texture for the platform and create a sprite and then needed to create a custom collision channel for it. And on the collision settings for the pawn I had to set it to overlap with the one way platform instead of blocking it. The platform itself won't hold any logic so I can just create a blueprint for it and place it in the level. The logic for checking the platform actually goes into the player character. I first created a new function called trace for platforms and then called that on tick. In here I first had to check if the character is airborne because otherwise the rest doesn't need to be executed. And then I had to do a line trace which is not fun in C++. But thankfully there was a great snippet on the Unreal community by Antipode which I used as the starting point. And after some adjustments the line trace was properly being executed while jumping and since we have these blue lines you can see that it correctly detects the platform as well. I then had to add the logic of changing the collision response to the one way platform channel depending on if the trace hit a platform below our feet or not. And as an additional condition for setting the platform to blocking I also had to check that we're descending because there is no need to check while going upward or we get stuck inside of the platform. So at this point I'm done implementing all the things I wanted to do and the code compiles. However I want to have another look at what PVS Studio could help me with to improve the code quality. When combining multiple files together it can easily happen that you end up having multiple functions that do the same thing without noticing it. Here PVS Studio was able to cache that and let me know to clean that up to avoid any confusion or bad practices. But of course this was just a really small project I made in a short amount of time and the bigger your project is the more use you'll get out of PVS Studio. There is an open source project I've been wanting to look at for a while now so this is a great opportunity to check it out. Vectorwar is a sample project that implements GGPO rollback netcode in Unreal Engine 4 which is very different from the delay based netcode it uses by default. If I run PVS Studio over this we can actually see that it catches a lot of things that could be improved in the code. It warns of potential null pointers, casting issues and possible integer overflow. Which are all things that can lead to serious issues. 
So if you want to improve the quality of your code, you can check out the link to PVS Studio's website in the description. So to wrap things up, I did quite enjoy this opportunity to dive a bit more into C++ with Paper 2D since I always wondered how it works. Of course here I was just scratching the surface, but it is a topic I do want to cover more in the future, once I have a bit more practice with it, so please be patient. As always, thanks to my amazing patrons.